Welcome back to It's Your Environment. I'm George Curtis, and I have a new guest, uh, Mike Lazat. Welcome to the show. Thank you, John. Of course, I've worked with uh, your little brother, Tim, more than a few <laughs> times. Uh, he had an important uh, position around here with the uh, DNR and wildlife, and uh, we did several shows, a lot of them involving Rush Lake. I understand that he's been promoted to other pastures, still with the yeah, state, though. Yeah, um, and, and no relation, but uh, <laughs> he, he's a great guy. Yeah. I tried to reach you this winter because um, I was interested in buffers, and you have the reputation of being a, a real pro with buffers. Uh, you do some uh, work with the university here. Yeah. So what is that? I'm a director for an aquatic research laboratory at the university, and we're trying to build things up, and one of the things we're exploring is uh, whether we can be a source of information uh, for uh, probably more for the urban uh, users. Um, and um, whereas, as, as we heard earlier, the uh, county office is great for that, at working with the large landowners, the farmers, you know, they're really the ones to do that. Um, and whereas we're a smaller outfit, maybe we can do outreach and uh, in the well, city of Oshkosh. Why are buffers so important for the people who live in the city and have a small amount of lawn space, but they've got a lot of hard surface, uh, driveways, sidewalk, mm -hmm. curb, and street, and things like that? Right. Um, I guess I could add a few things to what we heard earlier. Um, one is that a, a natural shoreline ends up feeding uh, the lake in, in lots of other ways. It, um, if you have shrubs and trees and they uh, would naturally fall into the lake, that ends up providing a lot of habitat for uh, the fishery. And so we actually spend quite a bit of money in this area building artificial habitats uh, for fish when nature would naturally be doing that on its own. And there's some studies uh, here in the state of Wisconsin that show that if you take those uh, natural uh, trees and, and other fall into the lake and you, and you remove that, you reduce the amount of fish by as much as a third. So for those who like uh, using this resource as a fishery, um, losing our natural shorelines, um, and we've probably lost the majority of them now in the Winnebago pool, um, uh, you know, it, it definitely has had an effect on the fishery, the types of fish, the amount of fish that are in the system. And of course, uh, the farm runoff uh, can be a major problem if that isn't handled correctly. And so buffers out in the rural areas uh, really do a lot toward protecting the water resource. Right, right. I'm uh, also the president right now of, the, of an organization called the Winnebago Lakes Council. And we recently, with some funding from the DNR, uh, completed a survey of uh, property owners who live on Lake Butamore. And we chose that lake partly because it it's in the center of, of this set of lakes, and also it has a mix of urban, suburban, and, and rural residents. And, um, and we're still looking at the results from that and trying to learn from it, but, but we learned an awful lot about the local attitudes towards fertilizing, towards uh, waterfronts, what uh, those people who do keep, try to maintain a natural buffer for example, uh, one of the things we learned was that they tend to think that uh, something like 10 to 15 feet is enough, whereas as we heard earlier from um, the, that officially and based on science um, in the state of Wisconsin, um, something closer to 30, 35 feet is considered a, a, a safe buffer. So there's a lot of public education that needs to happen. Now you've got some experience and insight on this expo that's coming up. Mm -hmm. Tell us about that. Well, uh, last year we did it for the first time, and um, I guess as an organization, the Winnebago Lakes Council, we learned quite a bit, um, and, and we were very happy to help the county promote it. Um, I think last year the goal was we sent uh, a postcard to everyone who lives on the water in Winnebago County. Um, this year we uh, have done a lot more than that, and we're sending it to other counties because this is the only event of its kind uh, really in the region. And, um, and I guess the other thing I learned a lot was uh, as a speaker last year, um, I also went as a listener. And it was interesting to listen to a lot of people come, uh, you know, their concerns. You know, um, one I remember vividly, uh, a gentleman came up and said, I really like 
my view. So, you know, he had the lawn down to the lake. He had the wide open view on, on the whole thing. And I noticed that he was of an age that he looked like he might be retired. And I said, well, you know, how, how you, you know, thinking about your children, your grandchildren, who's going to inherit this land, who's going, who's going to live there in the future, if you could even plant a tree or two, it won't block your view, you know. And if you can plant something native, say an oak, you know, um, you'll be thinking about the future um, and you won't necessarily lose your view in, in the time that you'll have left to enjoy this land. But someone in the future will come along and they'll see an established tree and they're going to be unlikely to go and get the saw out. And... Good point. Yeah. We don't own this land and we can't take it with us. We're stewards for a while. Right. And finally we have a generation that I think is going to leave it a little better than they found it. Are you going to be able to make the expo yourself? Uh, yes, and uh, I'm uh, running two events. Um, if you come very early, 9 o'clock, um, we're going to be running a session on um, to try to recruit some people and a three-hour training session on becoming uh, stewards of the lakes for um, invasive species. It's a program called Clean Boats, Clean Waters, and we're going to be just the building next door. Um, you'll see a boat out there, and, uh, and we'll be running... Uh, um, so if you're a boater and you'd like, you've run into us at the boat launches, we've had a lot of students out the last few years. Um, we're going to be doing training for that. And then in the afternoon, I'm going to be speaking. Well, excellent. Uh, there's going to be a lot to see. I hope a lot of people come and enjoy and learn, and I look forward to seeing you on the 31st. Thank you.